Hey guys, last time we went full lazy mode on the nine to one un un, one wire, no solder. And the question inevitably comes up, can you do the same thing for other un uns? What about the 49 and or 64 to one un uns that feed our beloved and fed half waves? Can we go lazy mode on those too? Sure can. Let's go to the bench, I'll show you. And then we're gonna talk about this one a little bit. Okay team, largely the same drill as last time. I'm starting on an FT240 so that y'all can see, although, this can be done very, very small uh, inside of this heat shrink tubing. BNC connector for size reference is a T50, a half inch toroid with the same exact 49 to one design wound on it. 26 or 28 gauge magnet wire. This whole thing is an NFED half wave for a QCX mini, more than adequate for a five watt radio. If you have loads and loads and loads of wire, you can start exactly the same way we started with the nine to one by forming the tap point with the twist. If your wire is just maybe long enough, it's probably better to just start at one end and wind it through. So that's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna do the, uh, the zip tie cheater trick here. And I finally got some that are at least big enough for this toroid. And I'm gonna just shove the end of the wire through there, zip it down and call that a starting point. So there we go. Now, it really makes absolutely no difference which way you wind around here. I put the wire through that way, it's headed off in this direction. So we're gonna do the first two wraps, in my case, clockwise. And again, I'm pushing it through as a loop and pulling it to get nice tight wraps on the inside. There's one. Two turns. And this is where I need to put in my little, my little pigtail, my tap, before I continue wrapping around here. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna fold the wire back on itself. Turn it around here, because I'm very, very right-handed. I'm gonna hold these things together and just give it a couple of uh, twists to make two things into one. Now I have my little tap point, what do I do? Well, I just grab the end of my wire and I keep going the way I was going. We were headed over the top and headed for the bottom. So we're just gonna keep going now that we have our, our little on-ramp, if you will, factored into the thing. All right, I just put, I don't know if you can see inside of there, but I just put the third turn in and essentially it's it's just like you were winding continuously, except you got this thing sticking out here. I'm gonna keep winding until I have a total of seven wraps on the toroid. So here's where we started. Here's the, uh, what will ultimately be the ground or shield of the coax connection. One, two wraps through the center till we get to our tap point, and then we keep going. Three, four, five, six, seven passes through the center of the toroid. I'm now ready for number eight. This is where I'm gonna come all the way across. I'm still going through the toroid. You gotta to go through it for it to count as a wrap, but I'm gonna come back straight across the thing to the other side for turn number eight. Now, a lot of people are gonna tell you that this has something to do with equalizing your flux or balancing your flows or controlling your cholesterol or whatever else the heck they think it does. Electrically, you haven't done jack. <laughs> you could wind around here in a circle and this thing would work exactly the same as it's gonna work with this cross wrap. The reason I'm doing the cross wrap is because right now, here's my gazin. I'm gonna have the shield and the center pin of the coax. If I cross wrap and continue on this way, my gaz out is gonna be on the other side over here. It just makes it easier to put in a box. It's solely a mechanical advantage. If you like to have all your connections on one end of the box, feel free to just keep on wrapping around here, have all your wires come out this end. It will work exactly the same. Either way, if you do the cross wrap, don't forget to count it. That's wrap number eight. Okay. And here goes turn number 14. Now, turn number 14 gives me a total of 
14 to 2 wraps, 7 to 1 turns ratio, that's a 49 to 1 impedance ratio. If you wanted to do the 64, you would want 16 total turns versus your two. So you would put one more in over here before you did the cross wrap and one more on this side to give you a total of 16 instead of a total of 14. Myself, I've had way, way better luck with the 49 to one than with the 64 to one, but you do whatever works for you. And of course, tie it off at the other end with another zipperoo. Now, you can actually still slide these around a little bit if you want to, even with the, uh, with the zip ties on there. But the reality is, this is another one of those, it really doesn't matter that much cases. I have a little bit of unused toroid here and a little bit of unused toroid here. And I probably have enough loose wire in here to, to stretch them out to, to make it consume the entire toroid and to make my spaces totally even and beautiful and perfect. And you know what, if I do that, nobody's gonna believe I made it myself. So I'm gonna leave it exactly like this. Okay guys, at the end of the nine to one video, I told you that the nine to one I made with a single wire was not actually a better un, -un than the traditional three wire method. It's just easier to put together. This one, on the other hand, is in fact a better un, -un than the traditional two separate wire method. This is what is known as an auto transformer, a single winding transformer. And if you look them up, you'll find that they have a higher what's called coefficient of coupling. In layman's terms, that means more of your power that goes in goes out. Less of it becomes heat in the transformer. You give up isolation. You now have a physical DC short, essentially, between in and out, as opposed to the magnetic core isolation you get out of a traditional transformer. But in our case, we don't care. That isolation's not really getting us anything. And the connection from the antenna feed point to earth is a straight DC wire in either case. So you're getting the cool stuff you get out of an NFED like it's constantly bleeding static to ground. So there you go. Next time you're setting up an NFED half wave, give the one wire auto transformer a try. It's not as much of a simplification as the nine to one, but you get a better product in the end.